Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and as many of you know, in December of 2017, we started Hope is Here because a friend of mine had decided that he had lost hope and ended his life by suicide. And uh, one of the things that I love about this ministry is that so many people have a story to tell of hope. And today's guest, man, he definitely can relate to why we started Hope is Here. Our guest today is Mark Kane. He is the founder and the executive director of Shelby's Way, and that is a ministry based right here in central Kentucky, uh, right outside of Lexington, the Nicholasville, Kentucky area. Yep. And so uh, Mark's going to be with us uh, today and tomorrow, so I know you're going to be blessed by this. But Mark, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for being here, man. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Well, I have heard your story before. You were a guest on another program last year, but because of what your ministry is all about, I just thought, man, you are a perfect fit for what we're trying to create about mental illness and about when you reach the end of your rope, uh, instead of giving up to say, hey, I need help. And man, it hit right home at your home. Uh, just share a little bit about why you can relate so much to Hope is Here and why you created Shelby's Way, please. Yeah, if I can really go back to the 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 day that Shelby took his life uh, that evening was significant. I went over and was visiting with Shelby, and we had many conversations. We had many conversations that were planned in the future, and um, there was a lot of different things in the last year that uh, that it was always the elephant in the room uh, that I, the thoughts I had of Shelby maybe hurt himself. But it was something that we didn't talk about, and, I, and I'm sure there was some thought, thoughts that he wanted to bring up to his dad, but he didn't talk about either. And um, but that night, I mean, in that day, I mean, he was in really good spirits. But um, what ultimately came out of that was the last nine months that Shelby was alive, he went back to the church and was baptized on September 20th of '09. And uh, through the heartache and all the hurt and pain. And emotional things he was going through with this young lady um getting back to the church really helped him he went to church at southern acres uh he felt like that was home and uh he talked about it a lot talked about uh the message talked about the music and how comfortable he felt there a friend of him is invited him a friend of his invited him and uh that night uh it was december 12th of 2009 uh Shelby's told me that he had a gift that he wanted to give to his mom and me, and that gift was he wanted uh, us to come to his service on Christmas Eve. Uh, of course, he's selling it and telling us what good music they have and everything, and, and uh, little did I know that two hours later he would take his life. I don't think at those conversations that we had at that time he knew, but uh, later on, a couple hours later is when they – uh, figured out that that's when he took his life, and uh, but uh, we didn't find him until uh, Tuesday. Um, and that invitation that he gave me, I, you know, kind of went out the window. I, I forgot all about it. I even forgot about telling my wife about the Christmas gift that Shelby had when I got back home that night. But after we buried Shelby, and after we came back home, we buried him in Louisville. When we came back to Lexington, the day before Christmas Eve, me and my wife was going out to the Walmart. And um, she just happened to ask me what we were going to do for Christmas Eve. And and I remembered the invitation that Shelby gave me. And um, I told Pam, I told my wife, Pam, that uh, Shelby had invited us to come to his church. My wife's dad was a pastor. He married us. She grew up in a Nazarene church. Um, I grew up off and on in a Baptist church, thank God, for my grandparents, um, my mom and dad didn't really take us to church. Uh, as I grew up as a teenager, I uh, went to a Catholic church, and it um, seems like all the girls I dated were Catholic, and so that was a Saturday night thing we did. But um, really since 83, 84, since I got married, there was, there was, I had no church in my life. I had the, the body of Christ wasn't even a thought in my, in my life. But um, we decided to go to church at Christmas Eve, and um, – Little does Shelby know, what he probably knows now, is that he he saved my life. Um, I, I truly believe that uh, God knew that he was going to take his life that night. God knew that he'd give Shelby free will. And um, tragedy came. And it's, it's so funny that um, why is it that we don't change or why is it that our um, mentality, our compassion, our emotions, our empathy don't come out until – 
we tragically hit these walls and get these scars. Um, and then they ultimately make you who you are. It's made me who, who I am. Uh, Shelby gave me a tremendous gift that night. And it was through that gift of, of, of his and me going to church and understanding the word and learning the word. Uh, it gave me great peace. I was going through uh, some OCD. Uh, I still suffer from PTSD. And, um, but with Christ in my life, there was more hope. With Christ in my life, uh, I felt like that um, there was always there was always tomorrow. I was going to live for today, and um, Shelby gave that gift to me. Um, after a year and a half after he pa- passed away, um, I uh, was already bringing some lip service to the uh, to suicide and mental health because I had um, it was during the process after Shelby passed away that I realized what a stigma it had on it, and I even realized too. Uh, some thoughts in the Christian community on on suicide and and uh, one, taking one's life, and it just led me to be outspoken. Ultimately, in July 2011, I walked into my job of 17 years, and two hours later, I went back to see the boss, told him I quit, and I left. I left that day and um, started Shelby's Way, and we've been growing ever since. But I truly feel. With everything that I've felt and everything that, that Christ has given me, that suicide, we can – Shelby's Way don't really talk about the statistics or the facts. We want you to understand the signs and things to look for. But what we really want, what we really want to talk about is, is that um, suicide is preventable, and it's preventable through, through us. Right. Um, it's uh, society – really has to change but i don't know that a change can come unless you have christ in your heart so i talk to people about my testimony and how god opened up my heart how how christ opened my heart broke my heart and made me a totally new person and was able to I, i'm able to see and feel emotions of other people now that i've never felt before and it's 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 true it's real i mean well, let, me, let me stop here i think you bring up a great point you know it's one thing to sympathize with somebody you know and as I share with people, uh, I got ordained in ministry about 15 years ago, and you know I've always sympathized with people when they lost their dad. You know, when he died, we all know that's going to happen. Um, but th- until three years ago, when my dad actually died, and uh, it was kind of expected the timing of it at least. Um, now, instead of sympathizing with people, I can empathize because I have been there and uh, done over 100 funerals. But when I spoke at my dad's own funeral that was a game changer it made it different so i hear what you're saying is you know you have taken what the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 28 that all things work together for those who love the lord and are called according to his purpose and joyce meyer says you can either become bitter or better but you can't be both but you've chosen to become better and chosen to take something that obviously was a tremendous heartbreak to try to help give others hope is that a fair statement oh yeah exactly i mean i could have i could have went out and just in just in layman's terms i could have i could have went out and kicked cans all day and let my lip hang the ground and and been depressed and then people could see me and say well there goes look at mark and look at that family look what shelby did to him um, because that's one of the stigmas, you know, is that a lot of times we tend to blame the um, victim, you know, uh, the, the one that took their life. And that wasn't Shelby's life. Shelby was a giving person. Shelby was a loving person. And I didn't want what I may or may not be going through uh, to define his life. I didn't want people to think of Shelby that way. And... Um, well, let's talk about that part there. You know, uh, I read your website. You've got a great website. You ought to check it out. It's Shelby's Way. That's with an S, shelbysway.com. And, you know, you talk about Shelby that, you know, he had a passion for racing, art, photography, the car scene. Uh, you know, the people don't realize, uh, and one of the things that I've had to be educated, even though I've been doing this now for 15 months, even a few months into it, uh, I had to have somebody tell me, say, you know, I wish you wouldn't say on your program that they committed suicide. It's just like when somebody has cancer, you don't say they committed cancer. Committed cancer. So can you talk about that a little bit, you know, from being a parent that, you know, lost a son through death by suicide? Talk about the difference in saying that, because that really was an eye opener for me and really has made me a lot more sensitive to that. I always say to always try to say that he died by suicide. 
um, and I've talked to different therapists and diff- different counselors, but it, I don't know. It, 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 it almost seems when you say they committed suicide, it's, it's almost like they committed something cruel. It, it's, it's like they did something, they did something back to you on person, on, pu- on purpose. And, and, and then what they, and then what they did was a bad thing because at any given time, any of us can be through isolation, through, through different emotions and things that happen in our life can become depressed. Throw mental, so throw mental illness out of the picture. You don't have to have a, a mental illness to be bipolar, schizophrenic, or, or manic depressant. Uh, anybody at any time can become depressed. And unfortunately, what we tend to do is isolate ourselves or pull ourselves back. And then thoughts of suicide come to the come to mind. But Shelby died by suicide. He wasn't committed to it. You know, it wasn't something he when they're when they're they are thinking about it when they're depressed. And then they go into the planning stages or, or what have you. But sometimes it can ultimately be just be something that really triggers for them to to take their life. But I can tell you that they don't want to die. Yeah, they, they and, don't want to die. And that's the thing I just I really want people to have for a takeaway. Now you hear a parent that you know lost a child to suicide, as you said, and I just want to encourage people when you hear that, when you repeat that story, and I uh, just had it happened recently an event i was at somebody shared that instead of saying they committed suicide that they they had they died by suicide is that a more yeah proper way to say it is exactly that fair? it's kind of like when you go to the funeral of somebody with, that has passed away by suicide and uh uh let people know that you love them and you care about them and you're here and if they need anything and how sorry you are but uh uh the one thing that, that you don't want to say is they're in a better place <laughs> That was a really hard thing for me during Shelby's uh, visitation was to hear that. Um, I don't know. It, it, suicide is so emotional. It's, 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 it's for good. I mean, you know when your parents die, you know if somebody's in a car wreck, you expect these things. But just to look up one day and all of a sudden your son or your daughter is gone and they've chosen to, to, to take their life and leave this world. You know, there are so many questions that come into your mind. Did they love me? Did they know that I love them? You know, I fight every day with trying to remember what me and Shelby said at the door when I left his house. I can remember everything about that evening, but I can't remember if I told him that I loved him or he told me that he loved me. So I say that a lot more often now. I think it's pretty important. Well, and that's a great reminder for all of us because you don't know when it will be the last chance that you might get to tell that loved one. And I saw a picture recently I posted on our Hope is Here Facebook page. A person holding a sign said, suicide does not end the chances of life getting worse. Suicide eliminates the possibility of it ever getting better. And I just think that's a great quote. And uh, we were talking with Mark Kane. He's the founder of a wonderful ministry. It's called Shelby's Way, which he named after his son. And I want to encourage you to go and check out their website, shelbysway.com. Uh, it's spelled just like Shelby County, S-H-E-L-B-Y, Shelby's with a S, way.com. And find out more information about this wonderful ministry. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow because we're going to ask Mark to share uh, some of the things that Shelby's Way uh, does. It's a really wonderful ministry. So I hope you'll tune in tomorrow and have a friend join us. I'm Greg Horn. We'll see you tomorrow on Hope Is Here. Taking care of Central Kentucky's floral needs for over 25 years, Creations by Karen features floral arrangements for every occasion, from anniversaries, corsages, Valentine's Day, as well as birthday gifts. You can count on Creations by Karen to deliver beautiful anniversary flowers, new baby gifts, bridal arrangements, or sympathy flowers. Contact them today at Creations with a K by Karen.net. That's creations dash by dash Karen.net.